What up, guys? Hello, hello. How is everyone doing today? Oh, no. How is everyone doing today? Let me know where you're joining from. If you're just joining now, I have got an incredible guest on with me today. So um, yeah, let me know where you're joining. I wanna know questions. I'm taking questions live. Um, also drop them in the comments below. Um, and so just to give you a little preamble of the guests that I'm bringing on, um, I'm really looking at all the situation, or sorry, what's going on in the world and different types of situations and how can I freaking help in the best way possible. And um, I have people in my life that are single. Um, and I actually just had a guest on that's going to be released, I believe, next week, Sarah Wilson. And we were talking about being single in a time like this, where so many people are focusing on families and how parents are coping with children, which I think obviously is the subject we need to talk about. But the one thing that she was saying was no one's actually talking about the people that are by themselves. No one's talking about the people who don't have a spouse. And so what about those people? Like those people also need um, assistance and guidance and I was like fuck like it so didn't even dawn on me which is terrible but look I'm always the one to admit when I mess up or go wrong or miss something and so I was like oh my god we've got to do something to help people to answer questions whatever you know um however we can assist so today dun, 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 um with millions of single people self-isolating it's clear that the coronavirus is leading to a pandemic in more ways than one i'm talking about pandemic of loneliness guys singles who in the past have enjoyed the freedom of swiping left or right going out on a date finding love or even just scheduling late night hookups um and let's face it the dating rug has been swept from under our feet or ours as in yours but as a general um to find people alone and now you're in a situation where your whole um dating um ritual or your goals have maybe changed altered um tweaked and so today i wanted to bring on an incredible woman called dewan kang she's co-founder and co-ceo of coffee meets bagel if you're dating and you're online you've probably heard of coffee meets bagel so right now, while I'm doing the intro, tag your friends, text them, tell them to join anyone in your life that you may know that may be single or is feeling lonely. Tell them to come and watch this, ask questions because we've got that woman in the house. Um, and in case you were wondering, this is an incredible stat and then I'm just waiting for her to join, but I got to give this stat before she joins because it's so bloody mind blowing. Um, Coffee Meets Bagel, bagel uh, has initiated 2.5 billion introductions. Um, so it's safe to say that her and her company kind of know um, how to connect online. So that was a great thing. Another reason why I want to bring her on. Um, and let's now just talk about how to connect in the virtual world. And if you're single or um, looking for somebody or wanting to date, like how do you, how do you freaking navigate it right now? Um, so I'm going to wait for her to join. And I've got a kickoff question. Question. Um, if you guys are just joining, drop in some questions. We've got some sticker questions as well. Um, oh, someone met their boo on Coffee Meets Bagel, Eleanor Scott. That's amazing. Well, you can thank her in person because she's about to join. Let's see now. Are you joining us? Come on. All right. No, doesn't seem like she's here yet. It's got a lot of people asking to join that. It's kind of cool. Um, no, come on, Dawn. Let's um, let me just click some things. All right, no, I'm still waiting for her to join, guys. So while I wait for her, I'm actually going to just answer some questions at the bottom. So why don't you guys throw it in? Let's have a look here. Nope, she's still not there. Um, all right, so let's do this intimate discussion. Hello from Altadena, California. What up? Um, love you and Tom. You guys rock. Thank you so much. Impact Fanatics. Ooh, like the title. Um, all right, what are you guys dealing with? Let me hear from anyone. Oh, they're joining. Anyone single? Um, I want to hear what the real issues in real time are. Here we go. Here we go. Come on down. Let's get some advice. Hello from Greece and Barcelona. Just connecting. Hello! How's it going, honey? Oh my God! I have to say, this is my dream come true. Really? <laughs> I'm your biggest fan. 
Jin, you're in Cham. Oh my god. Yeah, thank you so much for inviting me. That's so cool. I had no idea. Really? Oh yeah, my god. No I talk idea. about you guys all the time. Oh my god, that's <laughs> in so fact, cool. Theory. Yeah, 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 yeah. Seriously. I, I, yeah, I had literally no idea. Um, I just, you know, trying to, I don't know if you saw my little um, preamble, but um, really just trying to deal with issues that people are really facing. And, um, you know, I've got people in my family and friends who are single. And even though I'm married, it's like, it's something that I could completely resonate with and understand how people are feeling. And it's like, go, like, I just read out your stat 2.5 billion introductions that's insane <laughs> and then i was watching a tv show yesterday actually and they mentioned you guys and so oh, wow. it's, yeah so um a congratulations on the company and the business that's amazing oh, thank you so much um and now i just want to like answer some questions we've got a lot of people that are asking how they can you know navigate dating in this world and things like that so if you're ready let's just jump into some questions let's do it and before i start i want to share with the fan here that I have so much experience dating. Uh, I've probably gone on more than 100 dates since I started Coffee Meets Bagel, mostly through Coffee Meets Bagel. And so I know what it's like to be single. Yeah, I'm super excited to share my experience and some of the stuff that I learned in the past few years. That's so cool. Someone <laughs> even just said that Coffee Meets Bagel, there's more of an intention to meet up than oh. Tinder. So um, that's another reason why I so freaking loved it is that many people that I've spoken to about your company, they just say that it really is about an um, intimate connection versus yeah. just like a hookup, which, hey, I am so not judging people <laughs> that just want to hook up. Freaking go for it, guys, if that's your yeah. thing. Um, but okay, so we're going to ask them some questions. Now, what happens is the question just goes under your chin. So if uh -huh. you want to put your head oh. slightly, um, if you can, right. can you tilt your camera and we'll... Um, gets the question going all right so this is the one that i actually that's great so i handpicked this question i had women of impact put it in but guys if you are joining drop in some questions this woman knows her shit she built a massive company <laughs> that is literally dealing with women or not sorry not just women but people who are looking for that right person and in times of quarantine where it's so freaking difficult she's going to give us incredible advice on what we can do all right Let's dive in. All right, first question. Single ladies are beating themselves up for not dating before uh, COVID. What mm -hmm. advice can you give to them? Because the thing that I've heard a lot of people say is like, you know, that guy wasn't quite right, but like now I'm alone. I should have maybe have gone on another date with him. Should, you know, and like they're kind of second guessing all yeah. the decisions they made before COVID. So what yeah. advice can you give those people right now? Yeah, well, first I want to share that there is nothing more, uh, and you know, Speaking from personal experience, as well as just interviewing a ton of singles, as well as people who, um, in a relationship, I really think there's nothing more miserable than being in a relationship with somebody who is not a good fit with you. Like someone who actually, um, there, if you didn't kind of get yourself into dating before COVID, there was a reason why you chose not to. And so um, I like, even if you, it might feel like, oh yeah, it's better to have somebody like anybody <laughs> right now. But like, imagine being stuck in, in like a small space with somebody that you, you just don't get along. Um, that'll drive you, there's nothing more that's going to drive you crazier than that. So I think it's really great if you didn't have someone that you really clicked with and um, mm. that you're, you're actually on your own right now. And I would say that right now actually is a really good time to date, uh, which sounds strange because we can't physically meet up. But uh, there's a lot of things we can do to actually still uh, create that new connection. Um, you know, I, I think we're very uh, great, like thankful that we live in a society where, you know, virtual connections and video and all the technology is available for us to be able to use. And um, contrary to what, you know, if you never tried video dating, um, it might feel a little scary and awkward, but I really wanna encourage you to try it because um, it's actually super easy. Um, in fact, I've been hearing that it's, a, it's even easier than meeting up, you know, for, uh, you know, physically because there's no logistics that you have to deal with. And then you get on and you're actually able to jump in a more intimate conversation more quickly because you are you know, taking call in your personal space. And the conversation is not, not like, hey, how are you? You know, how was your weekend kind of thing? It's more like, oh, wow, that's a cool thing that you actually have in your room. Like, tell me, tell me more stories mm. about that. Yeah, yeah. So that's... I'm... Exactly. So I'm, I'm hearing that it's actually easier to make that the type of real connections that we probably are, you know, all of us are kind of like craving for. 
Yeah, that's so true. Someone actually just wrote as you were talking as well. Um, this is Charlotte Kate London said, a hundred percent settling does not cure loneliness. And that's so I, fucking I true. That. Like you are so right because as humans, we always think about, oh, the grass is greener on the other side, right? It's just it's just a natural instinct, I think. And so people right now would be like, man, maybe I should have dated that person because I wouldn't be alone. Like, I so love that you said that because just because you have someone around doesn't mean that you're not lonely, right? If you're not emotionally connecting with somebody, if they're not right, then yeah. I mean, you're hearing stories, which is so heartbreaking. But right now, hearing stories about couples um, who are in abusive relationships and they're stuck in the house together. Yeah. Um, oh and people, God where it's like emotionally they're not connecting and maybe they what i call um bed death right which is like people aren't sleeping together and they're just living together as couples but they're not actually connected um yeah so i love that you're saying like the connection yeah, I, part. yeah well i think really I don't, I don't think there's anything lonelier than feeling lonely in a relationship oh yeah that's so true actually i think you're right. There would be something even more lonely about that. Yeah, yeah. You you rather just be on your own, really. Yeah. 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 All right, guys. If you're just joining, we're answering questions live. Um, all right, let me pull up another question. Um, all right, let's have a look at this one. This is from Mum Wonder. How to make a long distance work when we can't be there for each other? Mm. Um, well, so... I kind of go back to, um, like, I think this is an interesting time. Like, nobody has ever dated in a time like this, right? <laughs> so it, 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 it poses, like, a new set of challenge. And I've been encouraging our users to uh, actually see it almost as, like, a practice period for you to try on something that you would never try. Like, most of us kind of date in a, in a like, most of the times, like, date in the same way. Like, we, a lot of, nowadays, get on dating apps and we swipe and then we text and then we meet up and then we go and you know like kind of the same pattern and um it's a great time to kind of break that and then um try to rely just on like hey what is it like to uh, you know, almost as an experiment what is it like to actually not physically meet up and just get to know each other through a long engaging conversation what is it like to actually do some activities together virtually um, and can you actually form connections um, around that? You know, we actually been surveying coffee meets bagel users since the COVID-19 started. And what's really fascinating is that those people who actually have tried virtual dating, 87% of them said they could actually feel the chemistry even though they're not physically together. Mm. And so, um, yeah, you know, I think more than we think, like there's like a very special um, emotional connection that you can build even if you're not physically together. Yeah, um, I, as you were talking, it reminded me of just what you had just said in the last question, where it's like, you can see the background of someone, <laughs> and it's like, even in work, right, it's like having all these Zoom calls with people that you've been working with, like, for years, and all of a sudden, they've got something in the background that you would never expect, and you're like, what the hell? Like, this gives a whole different um, perspective of who that person is as a human, and so I really freaking love that um, that mindset on... Um, using this time as a strategy in order to connect even deeper when you may not be able to connect other times. And look, just for myself, with my family, I'm doing Skype calls on the weekends. So I'm yeah. doing a Skype call with my in-laws, I'm doing a Skype call with my dad, I'm doing a Skype call with my mom and her family. And it's like, I would never do that if I wasn't <laughs> in quarantine. But it's still on the weekend, so there's nothing different. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you know, the other day I had a birthday party, and this applies to not just dating any, any relationships that we have, right? Like, it was my brother-in-law's birthday. And usually, I mean, um, we just celebrate kind of small, because you kind of have to physically be there. But like this time, my parents in Korea called in, you know, my sisters, in, like who just like actually gave birth, uh, in, you know, two hours away, called in. Like we were all together, just connecting. And be be honestly, like never, never have done that. Right. And, yeah, it was so special. And then we all actually decorated our virtual background on Zoom, just kind of as an expression of like whatever we wanted to share. It was so awesome, and I really. So yeah, again, like it, 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 I know it's like something that we've never tried, which feels a little bit scary. Um, and dating is already scary. You're kind of mm -hmm. like putting yourself out there. Um, but I really highly want to encourage uh, all of you to really like take it as an experiment and try it on. Yeah, I love that. And even just framing it like that makes it kind of like a game instead of it feeling like I'm being forced and yeah. I don't have a choice. Like going like, 
all right, it's an experiment. Let's see how we do. I yeah. love that perspective so much. I'm going to get to the next question. And by the way, I mean, me, me and Tom dated, you know, two years long distance um, when mm. we first met. And this was 20 years ago. So we didn't have Skype. We didn't have text messages. All we had was email. So I would send an email. Oh and then 24 God. hours later, because of the time difference and he would work, he would then get back to me. And it became this moment of like, when you're with that person, whether it's like a Skype now, and it's like, make that special, make that yeah. moment and that time mean something. Because, yeah. you know, it's like, we're always rushing around like you were even saying, it's like, you, you're so freaking busy, you never have time to do anything <laughs> until you're forced to sit down, right? Yeah, that is so sweet. And you know, like, there, there is something about it, there, there's an expression like, longing makes heart grow fonder or something like that. What is uh, this? I mean, oh, yes, yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. So, like, when you're not, like, so available to each other, actually, like, I think you think about that person more. You cherish the moment when you are connecting. Yeah, that is so sweet. Yeah. Um, all right. So, we got some incredible um, shout outs. Um, we've got some shout outs from Greece, Florida, wow. India, Germany, Finland, Sweden, Romania, Saudi Arabia, Angola, Japan and Bangladesh. What up wow, in the house? Incredible. Um, all right, I'm going to take another question. Can you tilt the camera ever so slightly more so I can see more of you? The question just hides your oh. chin a little. Okay. Um, so so, like this? No? Yeah, there it is, okay. girl. All right, I'm going to pull up another question right now. Guys, if you're just joining, put in a question on the sticker, and this woman is here to answer everything. She's the brains behind Coffee Meets Bagel. Um, all right. Here we go. I've got a question. How do you fully put your trust in the mm. other person? Mm. Wow. Yeah. This is. You know, it's it's yeah. Like with like dating, it, it's so much of it is having to put trust in the other person and like put yourself out there. Uh, and it, it's scary. I think we have to all acknowledge that it's 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 not easy. Um, and you know, I think that's why. So many of us um, have a hard time sharing, right? Because like, oh, what if I get, especially if you like somebody, like what if I, if, what if they don't like what I say? Uh, what if they, yeah, they don't think I'm cool. <laughs> like there's so many of that really, um, I, I think it's just a very natural thing. So I want to acknowledge that it's, it's, mm. it's, it's hard. Um, I think there are a number of things that like you could do to make things a little bit easier and you don't um, trust building is like moments of small act of courage, right? It, you don't have to, you don't have to do something huge. Um, and so even, even things like, you know, trying to even saying things like, you know, recently I got a question like, Hey, I want to do a FaceTime versus text messaging. Like, how do I say that? Like that's, that's like a small request. And so it's not like a huge thing you're asking. Um, hey, you know, like, would you be open to FaceTiming? Like, because I think it's a better way to get to know somebody, like kind of share why. And then you see how they engage. And then you kind of like build trust from those kind of small incremental moments that kind of flourish into something big uh, gradually. Like you don't have to, you know, trust like that person with something huge from the very beginning. That's so true. Like everything really is building blocks, right? It's yeah. um, trust doesn't, what's actually, in fact, what's crazy though is trust isn't gained overnight, but trust can be lost like that. Mm, mm, that's that's so true. scary, right? <laughs> <laughs> Not to get morbid or anything, um, but it just goes to show though how powerful trust can be. Yeah. And you're so right. It's, I used to think, well, if people would say it, then that was that. But the truth is it all comes in action, right? Someone can say, hey, I trust you to the blue in the face, you know, and just take me and my husband, Tom. It's like he can keep saying it, but nothing's going to trump his actions, right? Yeah. So it's like, do they act like they can be trustworthy? Do you tell them something and then see in a moment of an argument, do they throw it back at you, right? So, and like all of those things are steps in going, okay, he was an opportunity. He knew something about me. We got into a massive argument and they didn't use it as a weapon. And because they didn't use it as a weapon, that's one more encouragement of going, okay, cool. Now I can trust them more. Do I give them exactly. something else? Exactly. Um, so yeah, hundred percent. I'm totally with you on that. And, and you know, like one thing I do want to kind of like really want to encourage people to, even though it's, it's scary, it, somebody has to start, right? Like, I, I see a lot of cases where relationships um, don't progress into something that could have been like really awesome because 
we don't trust the other person mm. and we don't really share and we don't we don't want to say like oh hey i really like i really want to get to know you i mean that takes trust to be able to say that um and, but because we so we don't want to say that to so the other person oftentimes like assume oh yeah you know what like it's so easy to assume like you're not interested and then like they don't want to say it so that they kind of move on um i mean even like you know my current partner and i i think it's a good example like He, when we started dating, like he never actually texted or called me. I was the old, I was the one who was always texting and calling me. And it, all my friends were like, "Hey, you know, I don't think he's interested." Just like forget it, move on, right? And um, I decided to trust him um, and actually share. Hey, I really do enjoy getting to know you, but um, you don't call me, so I'm wondering if we're on the same page. Like, are you actually interested in me? So I engaged in a conversation, trusting. that he's going to, you know, be respectful. Um, and even if he wasn't interested, he's going to be respectful. And that's kind of got us to where we are today. And so that act of kind of like, you know, um, incrementally, like don't, it, you know, like you don't, again, you don't, don't do something huge. <laughs> but, but it is important to kind of like put that small trust and like take the leap of faith. Well, let's, let's keep going down this trusting because I really, really like it, especially online. Um, how do you know whether to trust someone on the information that they've put is true or not? Because yeah. that would be the one thing, like, I guess I'm just skeptical in a way as a human. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I'm just like, obviously, people are going to try. A, people are going to always try and show their best self, not necessarily mm-hmm. always their complete true self. Right. And then B, it's like a, maybe a protective mechanism. How do you um, suggest people online or even just in person, whether it's a dating app or not? Um, well, actually, no, that's not true. Because if it's a dating app, it's just stats, right? And it's photos yeah. how do you trust that's the real them and how do you um suggest and advise people navigate seeing who they are as a profile versus seeing who they really are yeah you know um that's a really great question and something that we constantly think about like because it is a there's a limitation of a dating app right like how do we i mean we have a lot of mechanism in house to be to prevent things like scammers and like somebody who's like completely blatantly lying right. but it's really hard to detect if somebody's you know like i'm 21 versus like 25 or something like that right <laughs> it's just really hard to detect and like also what they say about their own profile like you're right like they do i mean it's a human nature to want to put the best version of ourselves and i think we should try like on a profile it's the first impression that you're making and so what i recommend um like to all the oh, CMB users or any singles out there who are using online dating is like, don't, I wouldn't put too much like, uh, what's the expression, like a score into the profile. Like mm-hmm. it really is a quick way for you to engage. Hey, do I actually want to like talk to this person a little bit more or not? And so, um, I mean, if like there's zero interest, of course, move on. And this is one of the reasons why I say like, if it's like, I don't know, maybe, click like because you just don't know like profile is a very limited information and the, the way you really get to know somebody is through chatting and you know even text messaging is limited it's better than profile but it's still limited and then ultimately actually meeting and having conversation and virtually meeting or physical meeting I, I don't think it matters that much actually like in the very beginning um, and having that uh, conversation and really finding out for yourself uh, what kind of person this is versus like just relying on profile like a lot of us actually uh, are really awesome person but maybe I didn't you know I was busy when I was signing up and I didn't put a lot of like effort into my profile right like you just you just don't know and so I wouldn't like put too much stuff yet that was the word that I'm looking for on the profile for the exact reason that you you shared dude I love that so much because there is so much I mean even if you had asked me before I met Tom what are all the things I'm looking for in a guy Tom wouldn't have ticked all those boxes <laughs> like he wouldn't love the man to death right and now yeah. he's like my soul part I couldn't imagine right. anyone else but like I had a list of all the things that I thought I was looking for and on that first day he literally showed me the complete opposite mm. and but it was because he showed me the opposite that I was even more intrigued yeah so, yeah you know, he had all the things that I so all the things I thought he should have and he right. didn't um right. like I, I was <laughs> I just kind of had a, you know, a thing brought up on like, if the guy's car's nice, then it means that he's a good person. You know, so like, I, I, on the first day, would judge someone by their car. Terrible <laughs> advice, guys, do not do it. But I did. And then I walked to the car and I'm like, this guy, like he's got this big Buick. And I was like, this so isn't my type. And he turned up and he hadn't even got changed for the day. And I was used to guys that like, did the like over the top cologne. Um, and so I'm like, wow, this guy isn't what I thought I would date. And he mm-hmm. walks up to the car and he opens the door. 
Oh my God. And no guy ever, at this point, I was 21 years old, no guy ever had ever in my life opened a car door for me. And I was like, what? Yeah. And he was chivalrous. <laughs> I, yeah, I'd never met a man that was chivalrous. So here I was thinking that I wanted a guy who had a nice car and a good mm. sound system, and you know, had decent <laughs> style and fashion. And he had none of that but he was such a gentleman. And in yeah. that moment, I was like, wow, if I had gone on a dating app and I had been like very religious about what I'm looking for and what right. I'm not, I would have literally have missed um, marrying the man of my freaking dreams. Wow. And so I'm so glad that you said that because I, I would worry I would slip into that pattern of, mm. oh, he's not this, nope, don't wanna date him. Oh, he's not that, nope, don't wanna date him. Right, right, right. Yeah, can you imagine? Like, and now you guys are such an amazing couple, right? Yeah, so, like, I, it is so easy, I think, especially now with online dating, because we're, like, you know, we're, we're doing a lot of swiping, and, like, it, we're going, like, it's kind of dating on steroids now, right? If I want to go on, like, 10 dates in a week, I could do that. And so I think because we just kind of get so used to that, like, rapid uh, cycle, it's hard to give um, somebody who doesn't really look like they fit the bill, like a real full chance. Um, and so, yeah, like really, really want to encourage um, people to do that. If you feel like you can't do that because there's no space for it, like I rather, I think it's better, better to actually take a break from online dating so that you mm. kind of can get to that space. That's interesting. Yeah. And look, this is a woman who literally owns a freaking dating app. So she, if she's telling you, stop going online dating if it's not working for you right now, that's freaking powerful. I so love that beyond measure. You can't even imagine. Um, all right, guys. So if you are just joining us, we are here with incredible woman behind Coffee Meets Bagel. Darun, is that how you pronounce it? Because I, I want to make sure that I actually pronounce your name right. Darun? Oh, yeah, that's perfect. All right, awesome. Um, all right, let's get to the next question. Let's have a look. Um, this is so fun. All right. How do you manage when you both have different relationships with money? Mm. Is that actually part of, um, do you implement that, like finance or anything, into the app section? Is there any, like... We don't right now. We don't right now. So, um, yeah, it's, 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 and it's not, you know, like money, you're, it's not something that you're going to even talk about on your profile, right? Uh, but it's such an important issue. Um, yeah, like, well, so, like, two kind of different line of thinking is kind of happening, like, in my head. Like, I think there are, like, when it comes to money, like, it's a value, like, wealth. Um, and, and so, like, Part of me is, um, I mean, it could be challenging if the value system is very, very different. Like you, you, your like aspiration is like, okay, I really want to build a lot of wealth and like, you know, I think money is really important. Like versus, no, I, I don't think money is important at all. Like it, it is going to be uh, challenging to kind of like try to, uh, you know, get to a point where you guys are on the same page. Mm -hmm. I think in that case, what is required is like something that you and Tom talk about a lot, like a really, really solid communication kind of skill so that you guys can work through things and sometimes agree to just disagree um, or sometimes compromise. And when I say communication, I mainly am talking about like, are you able to uh, be aware of like what your emotional needs are, like wants are, and instead of like lashing it out, like we're getting upset at somebody, like can articulate that clearly so that they can have a chance to meet that and vice versa. Um, and so, yeah, I think when it comes to some value difference like that, like, solid, like working on solid communication so you can actually like, at least get, get where the other person is at, I think that's really important. Yeah. Um, out of curiosity, how come you do, you do not um, put that as part of the app? Is it because you just want to focus on the romance side and now that sort of thing kind of gets into the logistics of a relationship? Because um, you said, like, you know, you thought about it out of curiosity. Um, yeah, well, like, I think most dating apps, when it comes to money, they, um, it's usually, like, what income do you make? And, like, you know, and it's a, it's a, it felt mm -hmm. a little bit um, statistic than, um, mm -hmm. like, the value speaking. And I think it's mm -hmm. a little bit hard to capture. And, I mean, speaking of trust and honesty, like, get people to speak honestly about money on their profile mm -hmm. um even though it's important so yeah that's kind of the reason why we never like really tackled it 
Yeah, totally yeah. hear that. Yeah. But like, I just want to echo what you said, because it's 100% about a value system. It's like figure out what the values are of that person and how they have um, what their value system is towards money and then discuss it 100% communication. Because Tom and I, when we got together, we definitely had completely different perspectives on finance. Mm. Um, I remember like That's on our first date. Yeah, so on our first date, um, at the time I just finished college. And so my dad had given me money to come to America and study film for two months. Yeah. And so Tom turned around on our first day and he was like, oh, so how much did your dad give you? I was like, oh! <laughs> I was like, you don't, you don't, hey, you don't talk about money ever. Like, that's what I was taught. Ever, you don't talk about money. And secondly, he asked me on the first day how much my dad was, I was flabbergasted. And I, in that moment, I was like, God, like I actually judged him, right? But by right. being so like flippant about money and earnings, yeah, and I'm just yeah, like, yeah, yeah. that's so disrespectful. And right. I don't know if I want to put that oh word God. to it, but yeah. in that moment, and for him, his perspective was he grew up like that where money wasn't an issue, like in discussing right. it. So yeah. when he saw me acting like so like cagey, he was <laughs> like, wow, what the fuck is wrong with her? <laughs> like, why is she being so bloody cagey? about you know um about money and so but now obviously we've been together for 20 years right. it goes to show that you can come from different perspectives yeah and have different value systems and work yeah. through it together that's awesome that i mean i'm so glad that you shared that because i was kind of thinking oh yeah that's that probably challenging. but clearly you guys like were able to make it work and it's like yes it's an incredible relationship so i mean just speaks to i mean if you're you have the will and he's willing to put in the work and like willing to work it out together. Like, yeah, probably can overcome anything really. Yeah. And I, I'm, um, I don't think I would, if I was on your app, I wouldn't put my either wage or what I was looking for. Um, yeah. I think that that takes away from the person. Now, yeah. if you're talking about ambition, right? Because yeah. ambition is a whole different thing. Are you ambitious? Because yeah. I'm extremely attracted to ambitious people. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but I don't think that ambition equates to how much you're earning. It just right. really gives a reflection of where you are right now, yeah, not exactly. whether you're ambitious or not. Right, right, right. Exactly. So I actually love that you guys don't do that. Um, all right, next question. Um, <laughs> guys, if you're just joining us, ask your questions. We are answering them live. Um, ooh. I just saw my ex, so I thought this was interesting. Is it okay for my boy, if my boyfriend wants to reconnect with his exes, he's proven he's trustworthy, but I'm very scared. Hmm. Okay. Um, well, so I think you, like, you kind of have to get into the, the meat of it. Like, so for example, like, I'm curious why the boyfriend wants to connect with the uh, ex-boyfriend, girlfriend, like, what's the intention behind it? Like, and, um, I mean, I guess it's one thing if you are, uh, like, really good friends with your ex, then, like, yeah, yeah, we're all just friends now, so we want to get to know each other. Like, I want to get to know somebody who's, you know, who's, uh, whose life, like, is important to you. So it, it, with that kind of intention, then, then like, I'm sure, it's, yeah, of course. But, um, yeah, I think intention is really important. And the fact that you're feeling scared, like that's a sign right like i think it's very important to pay attention to what are, the, the signal that our body is sending and so like pay attention to why why are you feeling scared um and like try to kind of dig in more and like i think if you need to dig in more to find find out the answer um and then that'll kind of guide you in like what is the right decision here Dude, that was so freaking fire. I literally cannot <laughs> add to it. That was just an absolutely freaking spot on answer. Um, all right, so we're going to get over there. Um, I'm going to just take a little hard left. I'm going to ask my own question for a second. Yeah, yeah. Um, what is, um, not even a hard left, but really, um, what is the thing that you're finding that your community right now is struggling with the most for online dating? I, it's... it's um, well, right now, COVID-19 yeah. is just loneliness. Like, I think it's just really hard, like, when you're single and you're, most of us live on our own. And, like, um, I mean, I'm, I'm, like, with my partner right now, and even that feels really hard, like, kind of, like, being segregated from the rest of my community. And, um, and so I think it's really important, especially as singles, um, to proactively reach out 
And I, I'm not saying this because I own an online dating. I want you to bring up to you. Well, online dating. Your advice <laughs> earlier was clearly just what you're wanting good things for people. So yeah, um. yeah but but like especially in challenging and uncertain times like this, like I think it we could kind of get into a really bad place if we're like shouldering everything on our own. And so whether it's like our friends and family or like this new like for singles, like connecting with new people is like a big part of like where we get source of joy, right? And so. I do think like proactively that like being proactive about that because it, it is a little bit more challenging to do that right now is is um important and then with online dating uh just overall like COVID or not I think the biggest kind of pain point that I hear is this like feeling of jadedness um because again okay, it's so easy to get into this trap of like okay I'm like sweating a lot and then like I do this, I, I spend all this time, but like, I'm not like experiencing that type of real connection that really move and touch me. And I'm not even talking about like, I need to get into a long-term relationship, but like, cause you know, that, that takes a element of luck and long time and all that stuff too. But cause even engaging conversation, right? Like there's a lot of us who are ghosting and I don't want to ghost, but other people are ghosting. So we, we're all kind of getting into that trap. Um, I, I think that is something that I hear a lot. Mm-hmm. And, um, I, you know, one of the reasons why I recommend, like, hey, hey, you know, if you're not in a good place, like, take a break until you feel kind of excited about things and can engage with the proper mindset and, like, fully engage, really. Like, if you're on it, like, you should really be fully engaging. It's because, you know, I've interviewed so many matchmakers, um, you know, through my job as well. And one thing everyone says that makes a, the single most difference in people who actually um, are able to find, like, the relationship that they're looking for and people who are not is their attitude, like, I think yeah. it's coming from, yeah, like this positive, like optimistic, uh, you know, like enthusiastic, excited place, or are they like super jaded and like, oh, you know, like, I don't, it makes a huge difference, you know, when people show up and look at you, like, you know, we all have mirror neurons, right? Like, we can pick up vibes and energy. And so um, I, I think it's kind of important to manage how we are, manage, like, how we're engaging with online dating so we don't actually, like, uh, engage from, you know, not a very positive place. Yeah, I love it. That's so important. And um, one thing I want to add as well is I don't, and I don't know how you feel, but I really don't think there's only one person out there for, you know, each person. Like, if God forbid something happened to Tom tomorrow, I believe I would find love again. Yeah. Um, I believe I would have another really good relationship. And the reason why I believe that is because I would work just as hard. And so you even said, right, luck absolutely comes into it. It was luck that I was 21 and happened to go on this date with this American guy while I was here for two months. Right. That was luck. There was mm-hmm. no, um, you know, like system, that I yeah. like, you know, like, so that was luck. The rest of our relationship isn't luck. It's freaking hard work, time and dedication and a willingness to look at yourself and look at your inadequacies and be willing to change. And so I think if you go into a relationship with that, one person may not be right. And so, like I said, it's not that I think it would be easy, but if God forbid something happened to Tom again, I absolutely believe in love. I believe in connection. I believe that things are possible. If both of you are willing to do it, and that's the other key, right, is you both have to be willing to do it. If I was in a relationship right now with someone who my partner wasn't as willing to change and adapt and grow like I am, we wouldn't have the relationship we have. So it, it definitely takes both parties to be willing, like you said, to work through things, to um, look at yourself, to look at the situation and work freaking hard at it. Um, yeah. So yeah, I just- I, I, I love that. And I think, um, I'm so glad that you said that because like, I literally, like, I do like, I do like an advisory series on, on you know, copy and Instagram and literally like that question just got asked, like, how did oh. you, how many dates have you gone on, you know, or in relationship before you met the one? And, you know, I've, I've gone on ton, <laughs> gone on ton <laughs> for, to, to say the least. But, like, one thing that I shared is that, like, there is no, um, I don't believe in the one either. Mm. And uh, my, my current partner either, I mean, he was the one who was filming me. And um, I think we often kind of get into this situation where, like, we just become so, like, disappointed and hard on ourselves because, mm. like, oh, yeah, I didn't need the one, like, the perfect one. Mm. Um, but really, like, you can grow into it. Like, you're not sick beings right like something that you and Tom emphasize a lot uh and like even if you get in the relationship like if you actually don't continue to work on it like you're gonna drift drift apart you're not gonna be the one for each other anymore 
And so I actually think the real work actually begins when you're in a relationship because you constantly have to work at it and you can't take things for granted. Yeah, hundred percent. And I want to actually take what we were talking about before and blend it with this one in jealousy, right? So I thought I was the love of his life. I'm the one. And the truth is, is that that to me at least, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. There isn't just one person that I'm attracted to, right? It's like there's a whole host of freaking handsome men out there that I look at and be like, oh, he's kind of hot. Um, but it's the fact that I've chosen Tom, and vice versa. I don't think that I was meant to be with Tom. I don't mm. think that I'm the only one that he ever thinks or sees as being attractive. And I actually think it's more powerful and stronger to be like he chose me. I chose him out of a whole umbrella of human beings that are handsome and intelligent and witty. Right, all these things that I find at all. There's a whole umbrella of people out there. I mean, yeah. the world's got seven billion people. So why <laughs> on earth would I think that I've only met that I happen to have found the one person that happens to fit perfectly with me? That shit, yeah. I don't believe in. But I yeah, do yeah. believe that it starts with attraction. Right, and then you both work as a couple, like you were saying, on doing the work to make that connection and make sure that you now are the one. Right, like Tom right. now is the apple of my eye, but that right. wasn't by accident. Yeah, yeah, I love that. I love that because I, I totally believe in, like there is no one. But you know, when I was、uh, I was talking about this question to my partner, and then he was like, "Yeah," I was like, "Do you think I'm the one?" And he's like,、uh, "Well, I get so far, like I, I <laughs> <laughs> of the people that I've met so far, yeah." <laughs> and then there was part of me, like, I think you know, you, it's 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 like human nature to be possessive. <laughs> I was like, "Oh, that kind of strong of it," but like, if you think about it, that's so special, like that he chose. I mean, of all the people that he could have been with, he chose me, and I'm doing the same. Like that, that's really powerful.、Mm, yeah, and again. Is it powerful, right? Does it in, in,、um, does it help you fuel the desired、uh, result? So it's like for me, it's like I want to connect with my husband as much as I humanly can. I want to be, you know, like what as one as much as we humanly can. And so it's in assessing that that actually allowed us to feel like that. That makes sense. Right. Right, right.、Um, all right, we've got some more questions, girl.、Um, Want to do some shout outs?、Um, and I actually saw something go by where someone was like, "Are you ever going to answer? Are you going to answer her question?" I'm not sure whose question it was, but、um, Michelle, if you're watching, if you can slack me, I want to make sure that it seemed like a few people wanted us to answer the question. So I'm not quite sure what that was.、Um, all right, here we go. Let's see. All right, how can you tell if someone is being genuine or fake?、Mm. Um, Let's take it online just right now, as people are on COVID and things like that.、Um, during interaction, while you're doing this online dating, are there things that you are like, "Oh, that's a signal," or "That's a flag"?、Um, well, so this is like a blatant case, and so a lot of like one thing that online in online dating is like a very like a it's a head and mouth game and like every online dating company have to deal with is combating like scammers and people who are like、right. just there with not the right intention right and so、um, they do actually have a certain profile look and so like、um, <laughs> like if their profile is like uh, uh, like you know typically as a profession is like a military or I'm abroad and like when you are engaging with them like they they they, they avoid Kind of like、um, video call or something like that, and they、um, like if something seems off, like <laughs> right, like yeah, like something got right, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> something is off, something is probably off, and I would say、uh, so. That's kind of a blatant case, but you know, like the harder cases are when they're not like really blatant, like scammer and things like that, right? And so how do you how do you know if they're being genuine?、Um, it takes time, right? And like you don't want to be snap judging either. Um, I think it take, takes time.、Um, so as you kind of interact, I think this is why it's so important to like reflect,、um, mm. constantly think about like, oh,、um, uh, like, is there something that kind of like what I refer to like your your bodily reaction, like, oh, is there something that、um, uh, like that's not making me feel good, and I wonder why.、Um, I think that's really important. Like a lot of times, we just kind of like. Ignore it, you know. We、um, uh, or don't pay enough attention to it. Like, I mean, you know, some of the relationships that I've been in the past, where I got into it thinking somebody was one person, 
it's because like I didn't pay attention to um, mm-hmm. my bodily reaction. Um, and then, you know, once I, all, I already committed, right? So like, and then like you find out kind of later and then in hindsight, I'm like, oh my God, like I should know when you know, said this. And so I, I think just pay, paying more attention and being more attuned to your body is, is important. Dude, that's so strong. Like gut instinct is powerful. Like it is there for a reason. And yeah. so in saying like, okay, well, if something doesn't feel right, like ask the question, like, yeah. why doesn't this feel right? And if that answer keeps repeating itself, then there's something wrong there. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I just think it's, you know, because sometimes we do make a snap judgment based on our experiences in the past. So you do have to give them like a little bit of time. Like let's not, you know, but if it keeps happening repeatedly, like you said, then it's like, red flag yeah all right girl the questions are just piling in um all right Mm, let's have a look guys we're answering questions live so if you have any questions drop them in um oh this is kind of interesting how do you stop the scorecard argument and start productive problem solving Mm. I feel like you and Tom would have so many. <laughs> <laughs> There's been many times that we have had to so many tips of or maybe not school <laughs> Yeah, so the truth actually is for us, um, it goes to like, what is your goal? Right, as a couple, what is your goal? Is your goal to not argue? Is your goal to have a very um, fluid, loving relationship? Okay, sit there and agree. All right, this is our goal. We both want this. We both want to not argue again. Okay, now you know what direction you're going in. So then when something comes up, it's like, who fucking gives a shit about a scorecard? If Tom's winning 30 to zero, but we're still getting to the result of what like we want, which is to connect, amazing. I want him to keep winning. So I think it just comes to perspective. Like, are you guys on the same page about what you're trying to achieve? And then if so, who cares who's right and wrong? Like, I really don't care. And I think that's where it comes to. Are you focusing on who is getting the scorecard win? Or are you focusing on what does that win look like together? And I always liken yeah. it to like a, um, a tennis match, right? So you've got like mm. against each other and your opposite sides of the net, or you pay doubles and you're on the same side of the net and you're making sure that you're, you know, moving in um, unison and making sure that you hit the ball and you're coordinating. That's me and Tom. We're on the same freaking side of the net and we both want to win together. So if he scores the winning hit, freaking amazing. I don't care. Yeah, 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 so, yeah. yeah. That, that's, I think it's so oftentimes we, we in like longer we are with somebody, I think it's easier to forget. So I like love that you guys operate as a team. I think one more thing that I would add is like, I would kind of, I'm curious, I would kind of ask, uh, you know, you yourself and the partner, like, why is it that we're wanting to keep scorecards? Like, is there, and I'm wondering if there's something, some need that's being unmet right now by your partner that's kind of drawing you to keep scorecards. Like, so for example, like, hey, I did the house for like, you do whatever, like, right. that comes from, that comes from something not being met. Maybe you think like he, you feel like he needs to be more supportive, like you you want more caring or something like that. I, I'm not really sure, but like, if you're finding yourself like keeping scorecards, then I think I should, I would kind of look, start looking for like, what is it about this relationship that's not really meeting my needs? Mm-hmm. That's freaking powerful right there, girl. Um, all right. I'm having so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. I, I, I personally so want to ask you business questions, by the way, um, <laughs> but maybe we should do it another live just for business because there's yeah. so much to talk to you about. There's yeah, like the yeah, relationship yeah. side of it. Yeah, and yeah. then there's like the whole shark tank and growing your company. and what, So I desperately okay. want to, but I want to make sure that... I, I would love that. Oh my, I'm just like super happy I'm on, like I'm getting to talk to Lisa. <laughs> oh, you're so freaking cute. Um, okay, I'm going to keep asking you dating, but what we should do is definitely do another one where we talk business um, yeah. and we talk about like, especially right now with the economy and how it's all, um, it's you know, obviously people are really struggling yeah. and being an entrepreneur like yourself, like I'd love to pick your brain and give other people advice. So guys, in fact if you're watching this right now heart this video if you want to see us talk business as well um 
but because we advertised it was going to be more about the relationships and dating, I don't want to like yeah. Um, yeah. stay clear. And let's face it, we can talk about business for hours. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and dating too. <laughs> and dating, yeah. Exactly. All right, this is a good one. Is it cliche to say when you meet the one you'll know? Mm, you know, based on my personal experience, I, I've heard that before and I don't want to like universalize my own experience, but I definitely did not know. And so I, I know for a fact that, like, at least for one person, it's not, it wasn't true. Like, my, if you actually look at me and my par partner right now, and, you know, many other relationships I've had before, like, it wasn't, like, it was not love at first sight. I did not know at all. And, I mean, you and you and Tom, right, you were just sharing that you guys were not either. And so I think it could be, um, if you kind of hold on to this kind of, uh, belief it could mislead you and like kind of um it's possible to mis be misled and also like write off somebody right away that who could have flourished into and become that ideal partner for you so yeah actually it, it, it you know, now that i'm talking about it like i think it could be a little bit dangerous um dude i am so freaking with you like i agree with you 100 percent. because the second you start to feel like oh well I just met him and I didn't get it, so they may not be the right one for me. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so it, if that's what you mean by dangerous, right? Where you're dismissing somebody yeah. because you think yeah. it's true. And it yeah. kind of goes back to what we were saying at the beginning about like going outside of your comfort zone and just, you know, talking to people that you may not on the surface think is right. a perfect partner because there could be something incredible missing that you yeah. may not know. Like there was so much, like I didn't even know, I'd never dated anyone who actually ever thought my artwork was good or really liked my art. Uh -huh. um, and so for people, I, I draw a lot. Um, and so when I first met Tom, he was like obsessed with art. And so the second he was like, oh my God, I love your artwork. I was like, like it was something I didn't realize was missing mm. and then the second I saw somebody that had something that felt good I was like wow I can't imagine now being with someone without right, that right um, right that and that's such a good point too like we I think we tend to and there's a lot of science behind this like <clears throat> why you actually should not <laughs> even be with somebody that immediately like draws you uh, draws you because a lot of us actually just get pulled into what's familiar to us, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and like our version of like um, ideal partner usually comes from the image that we had with our parents, like whether it's your dad or mom. And, and so yeah, whoever reminds you of that person and doesn't mm -hmm. mean that they're like the ideal partner for you, right? You might just get drawn to it because, just because that's what you're like, that's what you're familiar with. And so I think, again, like going back to just examining and kind of like reflecting like why, why am I feeling this way uh, maybe maybe you guys are like an ideal partner but really I, maybe not mm. and there's a massive difference right between the sexual chemistry that you may feel on the first day and then yeah. hey in 10 20 years are we actually ever going to get along because right. no matter how much people want to believe it the chemistry that you feel when you first start dating someone is that you do a brain scan it's like you've just taken a hit of cocaine like it actually is you take someone that's just done cocaine and you do someone that's just started dating someone they're very attracted to the brain scan looks almost identical um, mm -hmm. and to expect to have that same chemical um experience in two years in five years it's just not realistic so if right, you're going right. from oh my god like there was so much chemistry this must be the one let me tell you that yeah. will fizzle out like the i i find my husband extremely attractive i think he's like such a hot guy um but i definitely don't have that same chemical experience right. that i did in that first you know month or two months and so if you're just going by how you think you're going to feel then i think that that feeling may be um you know it may be that sexual tension yeah um but that's not going to take you through, you know, um, arguments, money issues, the coronavirus. That's not going to yes. get you through sickness or death in the family or, you know, all of these things that needs to be way beyond when you see them, you know. Yeah, that, that's so true. Yeah. So I would kind of air in the, you know, like kind of wait and see, observe and yeah, kind of mode then. Oh, yeah, this is the one. I, I just know. <laughs> yeah. Girl, I can't believe we've been talking for an hour already. Oh this is insane. Um, <laughs> so let's make sure that we then do a part two for business because that's definitely something I'd love to talk to you about. I would um, love that. 
Where can people yeah. find you, your company, all the amazing things? Any last words you want to leave the audience with? Yeah, so you can find me at at Down Kang or at Coffee Meets Bagel uh, uh, Instagram. Actually, I do a dating advisory kind of like a video shot on our Instagram. So if you have any dating questions, you can ask there as well. And um, uh, the last note that I want to leave with leave all of us with is, uh, you know, some of us again, like going back to the Corona thing. Um, I know a lot of singles are feeling discouraged um, because of the the inability to meet physically and. Um, one thing that I've been sharing with people is that, like, because things are like just slowing down, um, and we actually now are able to have the space to be able to focus on um, one, you know, one person at a time, and like go deeper and give people the benefit of the doubt, give the people the space that they deserve to, you know, to be known. And I really believe that that slower dating approach, which is what Coffee Meets Bagel has always embodied, is is actually it can be a faster way to like get that genuine connection that most of our kind of like looking for. So um, yeah, like I would just kind of like leave you with that. Thank you. Girl, you've been so freaking amazing. Um, my audience, probably you guys know that I often, I pretty much only do these um, interviews when it's someone that I know. Um, and this is actually the first time meeting you at a meeting. <laughs> but, but honestly, what you have done and what you were doing and how you were showing up in the world right now with the corona and understanding um, the true seriousness of what it is for people to be alone and single right now. And that like, we have to be serving them just as much as we're serving other, you know, families, with kids and stuff like that so mm -hmm. i cannot freaking thank you enough for taking the time to come on and talk to me i think you're a freaking awesome girl <laughs> and um and we're definitely going to do a business business episode um and so guys thank you all for joining us mad respect heart this show the love to this woman and coffee meets bagel and everything they're freaking doing um and yeah until next time guys be thank you so much life. girl thank you so much <laughs> yeah this is so much fun thanks for having me thank you sweetie all right peace out guys bye bye everyone